So I just want to thank everyone again for joining our webinar today. Uh, this is webinar number two in our five-part series on our CCAN certification program. Uh, the topic today will be material costing, uh, specifically how to job cost your materials in NOFI. Uh, and again, we will be covering a little bit about how it is going to integrate with your QuickBooks account. Uh, and this is going to be really focused on you know, where NOFI is getting numbers uh, to show you real-time material costing, how different uh, items are handled, you know, between purchases, bills, uh, you know, just general uh, material cost entries against the project. Uh, and we're going to have a QA and a at the end, so feel free to, you know, type anything into the Zoom text chat if you'd like, and I'll follow up on it at the end of the demonstration. Um, and with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and kind of just give you a quick little breakdown of the different topics we'll be covering, you know, inside this presentation. Uh, so, uh, again, obviously the overview of what we're going to be doing here is, co you know, covering different processes and kind of how they work, you know, beyond NOFI as well, just, you know, different, you know, purchase to bill processes, obviously payments as well. Uh, I'm also going to give you a breakdown of the different types of purchases that we do offer in NOFI, so you can learn a little bit more about that. Uh, again, followed by the demonstration, that's part four. And uh, I'll also be going through, you know, how we get everything from NOFI into QuickBooks and how we make sure to map it all to the correct uh, you know, accounts uh, on the QuickBooks end. Um, but a big part of material costing, and this is a big reason that people like to use NOFI, is not just tracking the overall cost of materials uh, on a job, but also the cost versus the budget. Uh, and so I just wanted to start off with a little bit more information on that. You know, how do we go about creating a budget for material in NOFI? Here's just kind of some uh, hot points and things you'd like to know. Um, our professional style job costing is something you'll select when you're creating a project. Uh, it's mainly used for fixed price jobs where you're kind of internally estimating the cost of the job before you quote a solid price to the client. Uh, and that's basically what this professional style is all about. You know, a lot of times in NoFi, we like to advertise this idea of uh, budget, bid, track, and invoice. That's our NOFI flow. And so when you use professional, you are really using that budget first, then bid. And then that way you have the budget to track again uh, once the job is live, as opposed to, okay, now the job's live, so I'm gonna go ahead and set up a budget. Uh, I'm also gonna bring up a little bit more information about plan and track. And I, I like to, I, I kind of singled this out here because you know, every job in NOFI obviously has both cost and revenue. Uh, and plan and track is really a project plan at the end of the day, but what it really is to give you, you know, a little bit more detail is the cost tracking center of your project. So this is going to be where you uh, are first setting up your budget, you know, again, assume we're using professional mode, but then later on it's going to be where we track all of our actual costs versus the budgets that we laid out. Uh, job phases is going to be a topic that we cover. Uh, this is inside of plan and track, and this is where you're getting more detailed job costing than just this is the cost of the job versus the budget for the job. Uh, obviously, we want to break this down into a little bit more detail, uh, and that's where these job phases come in. You know, it's almost like the classic cost code in that it's not job X cost me this amount, it's this part of job X. You know, it's the framing on this project, it's the painting on this project, and that's where uh, phases come in. Uh, I also brought up this add materials button. And you'll be able to see this in the interface a little bit more specifically when we're doing the demo. Um, but this is actually part of every job phase when you're building a budget. And this is where you can actually set up a budget that's not just a dollar figure, but actually a list of materials, you know, an itemized budget that's uh, as opposed to writing in, as you see below 1500, it's the idea of uh, my budget is 1500, but that consists of, you know, uh, 100 studs of lumber, you know, 200 sheets of ply, this many nails, and that way you get more detailed reporting as a contractor than just I spent too much or I spent less than I expected. Uh, and obviously the last field here, materials budget, very straightforward. Uh, this is the field that we're going to be tracking all of your actual costs against. You can adjust them here and there as you go through the life of the project, but obviously the idea is to get as close to this as possible when you're doing all of your actual printed So I just wanted to get into different items that create material costs against the job in NOFI. Uh, the first thing that people always ask about is purchase orders. And this is one of the most straightforward uh, you know, costs we have here. Uh, 
this is basically any kind of purchase that you're going to be receiving a bill for later on. That's why we call it vendor will invoice. Basically, it's putting in a temporary or you know, a committed cost to the job that's saying, this is what we ordered. This is how much it's probably going to cost us based off of how much you know, we generally spend on this item. And then later on, we're going to reconcile it by logging a bill against this purchase order. Uh, the bill will sync with our QuickBooks account. Uh, but that, that way, you know, it can help us with this whole process. I'm going to get into the purchase order process a little bit more after this. Uh, we can also log bills directly into Notify. Again, they can be against the purchase order, but if you'd like to start the costing process at the bill, you can do that as well. Uh, you don't have to log the purchases first. You just enter them right into Notify. Uh, again, this is kind of a different flow than a lot of different things you'll uh, be seeing because it's not going to enter into QuickBooks. Uh, we do have the ability to turn that on. It's something we can always give you more info on. But you can log the bills into your Notify account and it automatically updates the material cost of the job. Uh, we also can manage cash or debit expenses, you know, kind of the classic, I went to the store, I bought this item with company cash, end of transaction. Obviously, that's going to need to be tracked as your job cost as well. It is available on our smartphone app. We do have the ability to take a picture of receipt, uh, and that'll actually push right to QuickBooks, and it also closes the purchase, uh, you know, as soon as you enter the uh, transaction because it doesn't wait for any bill later on. Uh, same flow uh, for when you enter credit card expenses. The difference is this will actually let you choose which uh, payment account this is going to be uh, entered against. So it actually gives you the ability to match with the bank feed in your QuickBooks account. Uh, this is actually a specialized feature that only works for accounts synced with QuickBooks. Uh, you know, I always do like to mention that Notify doesn't need to be integrated with QuickBooks. Uh, but this is definitely a neat feature if you're uh, really in-depth with the bank fees in your QuickBooks account. Uh, we also manage reimbursements for employees who are spending their own cash and they're going to put in a request for reimbursement in the office. Uh, what this simply does is creates an outstanding bill in your Notify and QuickBooks account where it uses the employee as the vendor. That way you can record payments uh, you know, against this bill. Uh, obviously, write the check out of QuickBooks and make sure the uh, employee is getting their money back. And the last thing I'll be covering is catalog allocations, which is basically uh, Noify's way of saying, you know, here's a material cost in the job that I don't want to associate with QuickBooks. Um, and it's really useful for situations where, let's say you have a uh, truck stock or uh, an inventory of items, and you want to associate that as part of the cost of the job. But since it's not like there's a bill involved in the transaction, there are no purchases involved in the transaction, uh, you know, this is just going to be a way to, uh, you know, get the information without having to adjust QuickBooks. Uh, and so I mentioned that I'm going to cover the purchase order flow. So I'm going to give you a little bit more information on this. Uh, the first part of this, and I, you know, this is kind of an optional first part, but this will be creating a list of materials, you know, your budget as uh, you know, an itemized list as opposed to just a lump sum. Uh, that way, when you order materials, you don't have to re-enter them. It's a big part of what we do in Noify is automating processes by uh, reusing information, uh, but you know, once you have the budget in the system and you create the purchase order, uh, we automatically use the pricing that you put in on the purchase order to adjust the cost of the job uh, at that point in time. Uh, this cost is really kind of like a temporary cost because when you log a purchase order, you're basically saying, yeah, we will log a bill against this later on, and that's going to be the next part of this transaction. When you log a bill against the purchase order, the first thing it does is it closes the PO and it actually removes the cost that the PO uh, had entered against the job. And then it logs the bill cost instead. So if you sent out the purchase order and said, I expect to spend $5 per unit in this order, then the bill comes in and actually ended up being $5.50 per unit. You can make that uh, adjustment. And since the bill is the first point where we sync with QuickBooks, you can guarantee that the QuickBooks information is correct. Plus, we do adjust the job costing uh, in your quick uh, in your Noify job, so you can get that information in real time as well and as accurate as possible. Again, this will close out the PO once you've logged the bill against uh, all the different items in it, so that just automates as well. Uh, and then the payments can be logged into your uh, into your Noify account or QuickBooks. Uh, we found that a lot of people prefer to manage payments in QuickBooks. You know, they do a lot of these stuff with banks and cash flow. So that way you can actually just uh, you know, use your uh, QuickBooks account to write a check. You can match it up with your bank feed. Uh, that'll sync back to Noify and close out the bill that was opened up in your Noify account. Um, 
and you know, I, I use this uh, example mainly for purchase orders since that's one of the most common uh, you know instances of needing to use this flow. But again, this also applies for you know companies that have a vendor spending account. Uh, so if you let's say have, you know, buy a lot of materials from Home Depot and you just send your employees to the site to uh, or sorry to the store to say oh put it on our company's tab, this actually still works all the same. The difference just being that you're not sending out an order for the material. You're just writing in, yes, we have purchased these, but we will receive a bill later. Um, another thing I like to mention with this process is that you can actually log uh, you know, one bill uh, against multiple purchases, uh, which we found is very useful in situations like that when you have a vendor spending account. Because you know, if you have an account, best chances are they won't send you a bill per transaction, but they'll send you a bill at the end of the month that says, Here's everything you purchased from us, and then we can actually go through the process in Noify of reconciling the purchases that you logged uh, in your Noify account versus the items that you know, they have sent you the bill for. Uh, and then, kind of on the other side of this, uh, you don't, uh, you know, you can actually also log multiple bills against one purchase order. So if it's you know one item or one long purchase order, and they're going to send you the bill as they ship the items. Uh, you can do that as well. Again, we close out the purchase order when the last item has had a bill logged against it. So, you know, everything is staying open and uh, kind of visible in Noify up until the point that it's been closed out, and then we hide it and throw it in the uh, purchase and bill history. Um, that's all just purchase orders. Obviously, I had mentioned there's several other uh, types of purchase that we manage in Noify, uh, and this is just a little bit more of the simpler flows that uh, are managed there where basically if I enter a cash expense, that just goes to QuickBooks. It syncs up with my uh, expense accounts. It can uh, obviously sync with payment accounts. Uh, and that way it's just kind of a you know, open and closed transaction. Um, expenses uh, purchased with a credit card, very similar uh, you know, type of transaction. The only difference is when you log something as a credit card expense, it actually prompts you for which credit card. Uh, this will close out the transaction so it's Main, you know, basically identical you know, on the Noify side, but on the QuickBooks side, you can actually go into the bank feed and actually, you know, it'll pop up that option to match up uh, your expense that was pushed in from Noify with the item that was pulled in from the bank. So you get a little bit more automation that way, and you can make sure that everything's reconciled with you know, your actual bank transactions versus the job cost in Noify. And again, when a reimbursement is entered into Noify, basically Noify just, uh, automatically closes the purchase that was entered and it opens up a bill. So it's kind of similar to the purchase order flow in that, you know, you have a closed uh, purchase and an open bill, but it doesn't wait for you to log the bill. It just automatically does that. So you can use QuickBooks to write a check and it'll close that out. You can hand it over to the employee uh, and it's all job costed accordingly. Um, now, I, when it comes to working with Noify and QuickBooks, uh, we like to have a really detailed map. So, you know, if, as long as everything's set up correctly, uh, you can make sure that every transaction logged in your Noify account ends up in the correct place in your QuickBooks account. And the first thing you'll be prompted for is you know, what we call company defaults. And the way I describe this is, you know, your company default is basically your way of saying, uh, you know, if we want to go very simple and say, well, every single transaction goes to this expense account and out of this payment account, then that's where our company defaults would come into play. It basically says if nothing else is collected, all Noify expenses go to you know, this expense account. Uh, but then we can get more granular with that where we actually break everything down into what we call vendor defaults. This is where you say, regardless of what I have set up as my company default for expense account and payment account, as long as it's this vendor, call it Home Depot, you know, ABC Supply, you know, whoever it's gonna be, you say anything with this vendor goes to this expense account. That way, you know, you don't have to go make the adjustments in QuickBooks because Noify only pushes to one account. You know, as long as everything's entered against the correct vendor, everything ends up in the right place. Uh, but then, you know, obviously since there are situations where, you know, you may buy a large variety of different items from one vendor, again, Home Depot is the example, you can actually set per product in your uh, catalog, which again is thinking with QuickBooks, an expense account that will actually prioritize over your vendor default. So this way you can say, you know, uh, Noify will first look to see, is this a catalog item? If it is, it looks to use that expense account. If it isn't, then it's gonna say, well, who's the vendor? Is there an expense account set? 
If there is, it'll use that. If not, it'll go up to the company default. And so it kind of goes through this funnel of more detail, you know, uh, based off of what Noify knows and how you've mapped everything so far. Um, the last thing I'm going to cover in the presentation part of this webinar is how we manage inventory. Because this is one of the most commonly asked questions when it comes to Noify uh, and working with our advisors. Uh, I do want to say, just right off the bat, Noify does not track inventory in that, you know, Noify doesn't track a quantity on hand. Uh, but we do have ways that we can job cost it, because obviously if you do manage your inventory, uh, you do need to be able to see how much you've spent on different items that have been used on a project. So, you know, right off the bat, we will pull in your list of different inventory items from your QuickBooks account. Nothing about the quantity, but just the fact that you have those items. Uh, we will be able to job cost everything that you've said you use. So that's you, you using Noify's catalog allocation feature. It's basically a way of saying like, I have used this many of this item on the job and we know the cost is this much based off of the, you know, the figures you set up in the catalog. And so that way we get a little bit more information on where we stand cost wise, regardless of when we purchase the item. Uh, through that, uh, and this is kind of just general Noify reporting, but we can give you your actual versus estimated or actual versus budgeted quantities, you know, aside from your uh, costs. And so I get to see that information of, you know, uh, of the number of my inventory items I said I was going to use, how many did I actually end up using, which is obviously very uh, important to know if you uh, are trying to manage these and know how many you should be ordering uh, later on. Uh, and then we can also run a report in Noify that shows, you know, this is how many of this item you have used uh, in this time frame. So if you have a separate inventory system that you need to manage, you can actually make the adjustments based off of reporting that we'll offer you in Noify. Um, but just to kind of ha highlight again, different things that Noify doesn't manage, and this is why we always say we, you know, we're not an inventory management system. So making adjustments, you know, using this catalog allocation feature in Noify does not sync with QuickBooks. It doesn't have any effect on QuickBooks. It's purely just for Noify job costing. As a result, we don't have any reporting on quantity on hand. So it's not like you can order into, into inventory, quantity goes up, catalog allocation goes down. We don't have anything like that. Obviously, as a result, we also don't have anything about last in, first out, or any kind of management there. It'll have to be managed in a separate inventory system. Uh, and then, you know, since we do job costing based on inventory, uh, I do like to highlight that the job costing is based off of the cost that you associate with that product in your catalog. So it's not like we'll look at the price that you paid when you purchased it in the past, and then that's what we're going to be using the job cost. It's just going to use the cost that you associate with that product uh, in the catalog. So now I'm going to open up my Noify account and show you guys a little bit more about what this looks like, you know, inside Noify. Uh, what I'm going to do is start by creating a budget, because again, that's a really big part of Noify is, uh, you know, being able to see, you know, not just how much did I spend, but how much did I spend versus how much did I expect to, because that's where you're really going to want uh, to make your adjustments in future projects. So I'll set up a new job, and again, as I mentioned, I'm going to use professional for my budget here. Uh, I'll go ahead and set a site address, not that it's necessary. And I had mentioned the idea of adding job phases. Uh, that's where this button is, uh, and you can see that it automatically pulled me into plan and track. Again, this is my project plan, but it's also my cost tracking center, and it's currently in edit mode, which means I'm currently setting up a budget, so none of this is actual costing. It's just so I can estimate the cost. So I'll say add job phase, and I'll say, you know, uh, you know, the first thing we're going to need to do is framing. I'm going to add another job phase, and I'm going to call this painting. Uh, now, when I create a budget, again, I have the ability to say, you know, two thousand dollars, and you can see it adjusts the budget of the job, specific, you know, specifically the material budget of the job. Uh, but what I can also do uh, is click this add materials button, so I have the ability to write in paint. And it'll reference my different items from my uh, QuickBooks catalog. So I could say, we're using paint. We're using, you know, 50 buckets of this, add item. Let's see if I have like primer in here. Uh, this is kind of the same stuff, so I don't even worry about that. Uh, you know, I can even write in uh, something else. You know, I'll make this drywall as well. So I can say, you know, this is painting and drywall. 
But again, the really, you know, the real benefit of setting up my budget like this is that, you know, I'm not just getting this $2,000, but I'll also be able to see quantities versus quantities, and that's where we want to see this reporting in our Noify account. Uh, I'm going to switch this project to active mode now. This is actually usually where I would create a proposal. So if I save changes and click create proposal, I could, you know, build a, a different, uh, you know, contract, send it out based off of my cost, you know, estimated cost plus markup. Uh, but since we're only covering materials, I won't get into anything else there. I'll switch this to active mode. And what you'll see here is that we are going to uh, not just have a cost, to, uh, just have a budget, but we also see our cost to date. Now, this is where we really see the benefit of building an itemized list for our materials. If I click order materials, I can choose items right from the list, so I don't have to re-enter them. I can adjust quantities and everything like that. Like, let's say I just want to order 50 units of drywall. This will go into a uh, purchase order by uh, default. We can adjust this here if we need to. Uh, it's not necessary, but you do have the option. Uh, we'll choose our vendor, and this is gonna come right from our QuickBooks account. Uh, and I can adjust pricing again at this point if I need to. It's not necessary, but let's say you wanna change how it's cost at the job, that's always an option. And when I submit this, It'll generate that purchase order, it gives me the number, and I can email it right to the vendor through Noify. Uh, for its worth, you can include additional information to include on the purchase order. Uh, you know, you can hide prices if you want to get a quote. These are all features that contractors are generally going to need. Uh, you know, if you're sending, if you're trying to budget out a project and you want to get a quote on some materials, hiding the prices is always crucial. You don't want to negotiate against yourself. And we default the shipping address to the uh, to the job site, but you can click Use HQ and it'll ship to your uh, office instead. And this actually automatically updates the cost of the job. So if I come in to check out this project, I get an updated cost of date versus budget, and it shows me the PO number. And this is a lot of kind of easy navigation through Noify. If I click on this PO number, I can actually open that right through here. Uh, and then uh, when I have this PO, uh, you know, this PO details page, uh, what I can do is get some more automation out of this where I can mark items as received. This has no effect on the cost of the job. It's just a way for me to be able to, you know, see should I be paying for this when the bill comes in. And then when I log a bill, let's say I just got a bill for one PO, I can hit this drop down and click create bill for PO, and that'll automatically start entering everything for me. I can also upload a bill document here as well. Uh, and then I say, you know, this was the invoice number, you know, it's due on the 27th. Um, and when I submit this, you see it gives me the option to send to QuickBooks. It's automatically checked, but you can always choose not to if you're backlogging data or anything like that. And when I submit this, it's gonna automatically generate an outstanding bill and notify, and it's gonna create this in my QuickBooks account as well. So if I click where it says Sync OK, here's a fun little shortcut in Noify. I can actually click a few QuickBooks and it'll open right to that bill we created. And you can see that it pulls in just all the different lines, the amounts, uh, it could pull in customer information as well. And I had mentioned this earlier, but our payments sync in both directions. So if I click Make Payment, you know, I'll save this. Uh, I can actually go back to Noify. Uh, and since this is a QuickBooks 2 Noify uh, transaction, I have to click Sync Now to trigger that. And once the data syncs back into my Noify account, it'll actually update this bill. So here's the current status, outstanding in the amount of 1500. I'm gonna refresh my screen so I can get a uh, update on that. Now it says closed and fully paid. Um, just to show you the processes uh, that have been happening kind of behind the scenes here as well. You can see that PO, 261 is now closed, which means if I go to my purchases, it would be in history instead of in my active purchases. That happened when we logged the bill, and I had nothing to do with marking items as received, which is a common misconception. And then if I go to my bills, it's no longer shown as outstanding here too, but if I click show history, I would be able to find it uh, in this screen based off of uh, you know whether it's been paid, if it was manually closed, and I get more information there as well. Um, now I showed you how to log a bill against the PO, but a big part of Noify you know, is being able to you know, be flexible with this and uh, actually be able to log a bill without a PO as well if necessary. So I have the ability to just click add new bill uh, and I can put in the name of the vendor. And when I put in a vendor name, 
uh, it'll actually, let's see if I have one that I have some outstanding purchases with. I think I have some with Home Depot. Mm, last try, Amazon is one I use pretty often. Bingo. So if I put in a bill and I choose the vendor and I have outstanding POs with that vendor, it actually pulls in those different items here. So I could say they are billing me for this item from earlier and that adds it to the bill. And this is also where we would be adjusting the pricing. So I said, yes, they billed me for this material, but it ended up being $21 a unit. And again, that's what will sync to QuickBooks and uh, add to the cost of job invoice number. But uh, again, kind of why I came in here, I could also just click add another item, choose a job. You know, uh, what was my job number here? Uh, it was 830 something. Um, yeah, either way. Let's go down. Do, 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 do. Here, 850 doesn't really matter. All right, I've gone too far with this. Uh, I'll add it to 866. Uh, and you can see that it actually lets me reference di different items from the catalog. Uh, and that's so we can get that granular reporting of you know, being able to manage the expense account, not at the vendor level, but the item level. So if I'm buying wire, I could say we're buying wire, you know, uh, 500 feet, add another item. Uh, also for 866, uh, and this is gonna be some disconnect switches. Uh, you know, we have to buy 20 of them. And we're gonna log a bill into Notify this way. Now I'm gonna show you this in QuickBooks in a second. In fact, let me open that up just so you can see. But I wanna show you how Notify is breaking down this uh, information when it comes to you know, managing our expense account. If I come to my uh, expenses defaults and I say, you know, show me Amazon. Now, Amazon set to office expenses instead of uncategorized expense. Uh, if you look back uh, at the other expense we logged earlier, it actually pushed everything to uncategorized because I didn't have anything specified for ABC supply. Uh, this actually will look at office expenses first. Uh, but actually, before that, since I use catalog items, I can come to my catalog defaults and say, well, wire is set to push to purchases as uh, my account, and my switches are set to electrical. So I can actually see that when I chose just general material, since I didn't choose an item, it went to Amazon's default of office. But then for these individual items, it actually pushed to their default expense account as well. So we're getting more automation out of this whole process. And then when it comes to recording a payment in Notify, we'll actually reference this default uh, payment account for the vendor. So it'll go to this first as you know, Amazon's payment account is CityCard, but if there was nothing set, it would go to the company default of Bank of America, and that's how we can get more automation about making sure that everything syncs into the correct place. Uh, just to show you a little bit more about how other purchases are managed, uh, I'm gonna come into my purchases and say, I'm gonna add a new cash transaction with Home Depot. Again, this is where we see you know, a lot of common uh, transactions are occurring. Uh, I'll just say materials, you know, miscellaneous, uh, and you know, $50 of materials. Uh, and I'll go ahead and choose a job because we are covering job costing. Um, actually, let me get my job number. I'm going to reallocate some of this stuff later, but 853, that's where that three was. Do, 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 do. You know, $50 of materials for 853. And you see that it actually lets me choose uh, a specific phase of the job. Again, this is where the more detailed job costing is coming in, because I don't want to just see the total cost of you know project 853, but I want to see you know where was this cost going. So I'm going to call this you know part of the framing expense. Uh, I'll even call it you know lumber materials submit. That just pushes right to QuickBooks as a an expense. So if I open this up. You know, I don't have to worry about you know, the bill or anything around payments. It just automatically shows up in my expenses. Uh, I use it, no, uh, the Home Depot's uh, expense account, which I have set to job material to pull in the description. Uh, and I had Home Depot or our default of Bank of America, so we get that transaction as well. So that's a little bit more about how you can get more detail uh, you know, when you're entering general expenses. Uh, just to show you the credit card uh, flow, because this is actually another very commonly requested uh, or commonly asked question. Uh, I'm going to pull up my bank feed to some credit card transactions. I'm going to use one as an example here. So let's see. Uh, I have on the 6th uh, a purchase for 
814. Uh, now, what we can do is say, this is purchased with a credit card, it was the city card. Uh, I could put in a, a vendor. It doesn't really matter who the vendor is when we set these up because what QuickBooks really looks for is the price and the date. Uh, I think it was January 6th. Uh, and it'll look at the expense account. So I can really write anything I want in here. Uh, I'll put it on 853. This is going to go for framing as well. And when I submit this, we're going to be able to use the bank feed. And you see that it gives me the option to match up that thing that was entered in my NoFi account with the bank feed and the transactions that pull here. So that way we can reconcile everything that the employees are entering in the field with the actual transactions that are pulling into QuickBooks from our credit card. Um, again, we do have the ability to pull from QuickBooks into Noify. If it's something you want to learn more about, just reach out to our team. You know, everything's always been built to go from Noify to QuickBooks, so that's the flow I like to cover here. Um, and then just to show you one other purchase style that I've mentioned, uh, I'll go through reimbursements. I'll say, you know, we're reimbursing Terran for, you know, gas. Uh, you know, I spent 53, 43, uh, and I just can keep using the same job here. And what this does is it closes out the purchase. It generates a, uh, I put something in wrong, uh, but it'll automatically uh, generate a bill with Taryn. I think I actually have some examples here from another employee. So here are different reimbursements that we submitted with Paul. And so it just creates an outstanding bill, which can be paid through QuickBooks, and it'll sync back to Noify. Again, we're automating that entire uh, process, and uh, we do have an approval process. So if you want the employees to you know, submit it, then someone in the office approves, and that's when you push it to QuickBooks. Uh, that's always an option as well. So those are our transactions that sync with QuickBooks. But uh, since I had mentioned it earlier, I kind of want to show a little bit more about how catalog allocations work. Uh, I can come to my catalog and say, like, I use materials on project 853, doing framing. Uh, we use lumber, and I used you know 100 studs. This just applies cost without us having to worry about the purchase, without any kind of bills, anything QuickBooks related. It just automatically updates so I can see a little bit more about how much we've spent on this job at this point in time. And now just to show you how this reporting has been going, and actually I just remember, I, I want to actually go back to the purchase I created earlier and show you one other thing in here. Uh, this is going to be for purchases that you created against uh, one job but that you want to be pushing to a different job. Um, and so let's see, my purchases from just today. Doo, 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 doo. And who did I say this was for? Um, this one. Oh, I'll actually come back to this in a bit. But uh, in my contract jobs page, I'm actually getting a update of my material cost versus budget. Uh, you can see that it specifies materials plus POs. Uh, we actually show that because you know it's not always going to be just build values. So you show you get to see the overall material cost from bills and catalog allocations, but then separately, you know, how much is in committed cost from purchase orders that you haven't locked a bill against. Uh, a lot of people like to see the distinction here. And then in my plan and track, I get an updated report of, you know, here's my cost versus budget of the job. It breaks it down to materials, but I can also see in each project, you know, this is the benefit of being able to see, uh, you know, not just our cost versus budget, but then down here where I have painting and drywall, I'm seeing, you know, 50 ordered out of 100 budgeted, 50 of uh, 50 received. Here's the purchase order. Here's the bill that we've received. Obviously, if there was no uh, bill, then it wouldn't uh, be showing up here. But I can click here, open up that bill. And so we can kind of flow through everything and drill down to more detail when it's necessary. Um, and then uh, off of the catalog allocation, I'll actually come back to that. Uh, I can see via catalog. Uh, and this is actually in my view history section of my purchases. So even though it's not a purchase, we show it to you here. So you can kind of uh, you know, manage this, delete it if necessary, point at a different job. Uh, plus, you can actually create these right from your plan and track section. So where I had uh, you know, these 50 items earlier, I could say you know, allocate from inventory. Uh, you know, we had some drywall. 
And so that way I don't have to, you know, go all the way out to the catalog screen. I could, you know, we had 30 leftover sheets from a previous project and that'll update my uh, material cost so I can see more information about that. Uh, you also see that it stacked these, so it could say 80 out of 100, and then when I expanded it, here's 30 uh, pieces of drywall, 50 pieces of drywall, this one's from the catalog, this one's from the purchase, so you get to see more of that information as well. Um, that's kind of the basics of what I like to cover as far as material costing goes. Um, the one last thing I wanted to show you, and this is going to be using that uh, bill and purchase that we had logged earlier. So let me pull this up. Um, I think I used ABC Supply, and this would be using the invoice date. Cool. Uh, no, this is the other one that I logged, right? Oh, no, this is it. Oh, and it's against the right job. All right, never mind. We're all set. Um, so this is uh, where I put this all in. I know I put one in against the wrong job earlier, but. Um, if you ever need to associate anything with a different job, you can actually open up the transaction and repoint it here. That's always an option. Uh, and if you go to your dashboard and click on Job Costing Hub, you can actually see all different transactions that have been input into Noify. And if you're syncing with QuickBooks uh, and pulling the data in, again, it's something you need to reach out to our team about. So you, I can say, like, show me things pulled in from QuickBooks only. I can show, uh, see you know, unallocated uh, only, so it only shows me expenses that don't have a job associated with it. So we have that option as well. Um, and if you ever want to see a sync, and I'll be getting into more of this during our QuickBooks specific webinar, but if you ever want to see a list of transactions, and that same list where we control our defaults of where everything maps, I can see different active transactions that have moved back and forth. I can click on complete to see it in uh, QuickBooks, or I can click on the description to see it in Noify. Uh, that's basically what I wanted to cover with this webinar today. Uh, I'm happy everyone joined in, and I'm going to go ahead and get uh, you know get to all of your questions as well. Um, but uh, I appreciate everyone taking the time, and uh, let's get started with these questions. Okay, uh, first question. I think you said something like a phase is something like the class of